really started to get to know him when he was in Detroit. Started as a video coach and became an assistant coach. He also coached me at the World Championship in, in 2021. So I got to see him coach and be around those top kids at the U.S. program and see what a great job he was doing. You know, he really helped me and was always in my ear, you know, helped me through the ups and downs of my, my first pro season. So I think, you know, him coming here now is really exciting for everybody. His experience, I think, is real impressive. Obviously, working in the NHL, working with the national team, so the chance to work with him and learn from him was real exciting. Adam is definitely the, the biggest reason that I decided to come to Michigan State. Spartans trying to clear the zone, they do. Out to center ice, Nightingale wins a race to the puck, comes in, fires, it's a goal for Michigan State. Adam Nightingale with Michigan State's first shorthand goal of the season, puts it up 2-0. Played here and then I played a couple years after in the East Coast League. Now I was out of hockey for a year. My wife was uh, due with our first and I needed insurance and uh, I took a job with a construction company. I was a superintendent in Charlotte, North Carolina. I really missed the game, so I kind of called around and got an opportunity at Shattuck St. Mary's. I went there, I coached one of the midget teams. I also taught economics. I coached lacrosse, I was a dorm parent, I was an advisor, I ran the summer hockey school. So a ton of different hats that I wore. I was thankful for that experience there for two years and Coach Comley called me you know, for an opportunity to come back to uh, Michigan State and be the director of Hockey Ops. Did that for four years, learned a lot. Hockey Ops 101. But I really missed being able to coach, so I went, actually went back to Shattuck. I coached the Bantam team there for two years and I kind of thought that's where our family was going to be. I got a call from Dan Bilesmo. He was the head coach in Buffalo and asked if I wanted to go to Buffalo with him. So we moved the family to Buffalo and worked for the Sabres for, for a year. Went to Detroit for three years and I got the opportunity to coach the U.S. national team the last two years. Spartan hockey has a great tradition with a history of winning championships and developing student athletes that move on to the NHL. The foundation of success is absolutely here. And it's the reason you've all joined me here today to celebrate not only the hiring of Adam Nightingale, but also a renewed commitment by the department and the community to support Spartan hockey. I couldn't be more proud to select Adam as our next head hockey coach. A lot of memories, you know, of playing here, playing with my brother and all the great teammates I had, all the great coaches I had a chance to play for here, you know, those for sure. And, you know, I think it really hit home when my family finally moved and then they got up and got situated and to have them here with me is kind of when it felt like it was real. My wife and kids and parents and in-laws, everyone's been super supportive, you know, and I think when you're a coach, a lot of times it is a, it's a pretty selfish profession. For my kids, you know, they're, they're totally understanding of that uh, there's times I'm going to be away. That's why you, know, you make sure when you're home, you're home. And I think we've moved eight different times. You know, even my in-laws, Jim and Joyce Johnson, like a lot of people that kind of look at their son-in-law sideways when you're moving the family all the time. And but that nothing but support and, and same with my parents. So super thankful. And you don't, you don't get this opportunity without that. We got a beautiful new rink. When we're done here, I want uh, anyone that wants to come, you guys come check it out. Come check it out, you're always welcome. You come back, every football game, you come back to that tailgate. You need everyone. And, and I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I, I think there's a ton of smartest, smart guys out here and need your support. And I think that's what I really want to make sure this alumni group is the best alumni group in the country. So when you look at the history of college hockey and, and the top programs, Michigan State is one of them. For all the guys, there's a, there's a pride of putting that jersey on and a pride of doing things a certain way and what it means to be a Spartan. And it's been overwhelming the support from all the guys from the different generations too. They've all sent their support, whether it be time, a phone call, financially, all, all those things, just huge. And we just want to make sure the guys know we want you back. Anytime we get a chance for those guys to be around our current players, it's a huge advantage. I had specific things that I was looking for in assistance, and I really think Michigan State's a place you can go get the best guys. There's a lot of people that have applied, and to get an opportunity like this, and I think it can be overwhelming when you get to the amount of people that are interested, and I think it shows what people believe Spartan hockey can be. And so I did my homework. I called um, other college coaches, other guys in pro hockey, to try, try to find who are the best guys for what we were looking for, and their two names both came up. And I feel super fortunate that they left the places they were at. When Adam first reached out to me, 
was just impressed with his demeanor, his vision, the identity that he wanted to create, the culture that he wanted to create. And the more we spoke, the more I got excited about the opportunity to potentially work with him. And then once coming to campus, getting to see everything from Munn to the renovations, to campus, to the academic buildings, to the staff that was already in place, and obviously was in a very great place and, and UMass and have some unbelievable memories there and great friends. Adam talked about how we wanted to build things from within. It was a huge, huge thing for me. He's got a track record of rebuilding a program. He got to UMass, I think they had five wins and they ended up winning a national championship and losing in the finals. They're a top program in college hockey. He's almost been right where we're at right now and where we want to be. And then Mike Towns, I think he's a quiet worker, you know, and I really respect that about him. And he started out at AIC and their program was in a rebuild and now they're in the tournament every year. I think he was living in the basement. He was equipment manager, strength coach, and assistant coach. I think there's something to be said about that, paying your dues, and cause you have to have a passion for coaching. And he was associate head coach at Clarkson and they're a top 15 team. Has a great reputation for recruiting and developing players. We're super fortunate to be moving in in the timing. You get a new staff and a new facility. The history of the program, obviously an unbelievable winning tradition, producing a ton of pro players. So to get here and kind of revive that was something that was really exciting. When I did my homework, their names kept coming up and I feel fortunate they wanted to come. We want Michigan State to be the top program in college hockey, and we truly believe we can do that. It's gonna take time for sure, and obviously we're super excited about the renovation. That gives us the space that we really feel we need to develop players. If we're talking about making this the top program in college hockey, that it does take everyone. It's not about me. It's having a great staff. It's having an unbelievable support system from the athletic department, which we have. The alumni base, we just had our alumni golf outing. The turnout was unbelievable. The community, you know, I think that you look at the attendance, I'm super thankful for that people still believe in and want to see Spartan hockey be great. You know, I think a lot of that stems from our history of, of giving back in the community in Spartan hockey. There's a rich tradition there, and I think people want to see us do well. Our only concern is about being better tomorrow than we are today, and then we'll do that again tomorrow, and we'll do it the next day, and I truly believe we keep doing that. Eventually, that's going to come to fruition. Tie all that together, it takes every single piece of it to make this the best spot in college hockey. We had a good week of preparation. We worked through the hard in a place where now we prepare for the hard, now we attack the hard, right? We go chase these wins. We chase these opportunities to be our best. Be your best consistently as a competitor and as a teammate. It's northeast of the nation's capital. It's the first match of a Friday night Big Ten volleyball doubleheader as the Maryland Terrapins at nine and five. Welcome the nine and four Michigan State Spartans. Both these teams looking for their first conference win. So Maryland desperate for a point and they won't get it as the finish there by Moore, the sophomore from Arizona. For the sixth time this season, Michigan State has forced a fifth set. Michigan State, 6-0 run. With a little bit of extra effort here, and they have a three-point lead in the all-important fifth set. Congratulations to Coach Johnson and Michigan State. They knock off Maryland in five sets. I live, eat, dream, sleep, soccer. Whenever I'm on the field, I'm just trying to get away from what's ever happened in a normal life. In one moment,
moment it can just be taken away from you or anybody else. You gotta live every moment you have to the fullest and, and give people 100% of yourself. How I got into soccer was my mom took us to the local neighborhood club and they had all types of sports, baseball, tennis, golf, you name it. We come home and my dad goes, so what sport did you put him in? My mom goes, soccer. I said, soccer? You know, why would you pick soccer? They got t-ball, they got other stuff. Will got into soccer maybe about three or four years old and from day one, he was just hooked. Where I grew up was in Gross Point, just right around the corner from Detroit. I went to school with Elijah Collins at U of D Jesuit. We committed on the same day, actually. He was like, all right, well, where you going? Well, it's like, you don't want to tell nobody, you don't want to give it away. He was like, where you going to commit then? He was like, all right, we're going to commit on the same day. And then it was the same place. <laughs> so it was like, you know, it was Spider-Man meme where we pointing at each other. That's how it happened. Coming here was kind of like second nature, like it was always going to happen. Him being here with me and, and having the same aspirations as I do is just amazing. When I first stepped on the field, I thought, there's no way I can be here. There's no way I'm in this moment right now. The senior leaders when I got in were mainly Jimmy Haig, Dewan, Giuseppe Baroni, Hunter Baroni. They taught me everything that I need to know when I first came in. I was with them a lot, and they taught me so many things about just how MSU works and how to, to carry myself. When he got to Michigan State, just he was just all about learning from the older guys, being in there. And I think uh, to Damon's credit, Damon saw that very early. When he came out as a freshman, he was very energetic. I think he was eager to learn. <gasps> It was 2018 and uh, we went to the Final Four that year. Will learned a little bit of patience. You know, he came off the bench at times. Really was just uh, kind of soaked it all in and he was a, a student of the game. We were on a trip away at Michigan and it was the day of our game, the morning of our game. I called my friend because I saw some people posted online. I saw Cassius post, I saw Elijah post. I'm getting phone calls out of the blue from everybody asking if I'm okay and I'm like, yeah, I'm good, like, what's going on? And it's like, you know, you, you feel me, your friend passed away. I just called my dad and I, it didn't really hit me at first, like I didn't think about it. And then I started talking to my dad in, in the hallway and I just, just kind of broke down. It really was tough for him. And I know that it was extremely tough for him by that bond that they have, those U of D guys. And I said, you never know what somebody's going through. I was actually injured at the time, so not being able to play and take my mind off of it, and then also watching my team struggle at, at one point and, and not being able to help them, it was kind of like a, a twofer. It's nothing like losing somebody that close. I lost a brother that day, that year, and it's like, it was undescribable. If you're gonna do this, like what we doing, both of us, do it for him and for anybody, because it's like, He's not here to do it anymore. So it's like, it really, it really gave like a lot of fire, like a lot of fuel to the fire, if I'm being honest. My approach to everything has changed since then because in that moment you learn the fragility of life. Welcome to East Lansing, Michigan, everybody. We are under the lights here at the Martin Stadium. I was named team captain my junior year. It felt great just to know that your teammates look up to you. Come on, boys, come on, come on. It's great to hear them in talks before the game. You always want your leaders, your captains, like when I can walk into a locker room and he's already telling the guys what needs to happen. When it's a player-driven team, and that's what Will, his passion, he's helping this become a player-driven team. Ever since he was a kid, he's always been a little beyond his years. The leadership skills that I, that I see that he's adopted, I think he um, has a lot of respect from his teammates. The players respect his game, and I think as he's gone through some of these different adversities, he's grown as a person, and he's more confident in what he does and how he leads and how he communicates.
Zach? Anybody will tell you in our in our little group chat that we have, he was an amazing person. It's it's sad to hear about what happened to him, but it made me a better person and a better leader and appreciate life a little bit more because now I feel like I check in on people more. I'll ask, it, yo, how are you feeling today to a teammate? Like, what's going on? Is everything okay in school? Is everything okay with, with your social life? Make sure everybody's good and make sure everything is okay because when stuff does hit the fan, you want to be ready for it and, and make sure that they know that you're there for them as well. He's a leader on the field and off the field. I mean, he has to be. The time here, like, you think it would last forever. Like, you think it would be, like, as long as you wanted to, but it's actually a lot quicker and it goes a lot faster than you think. I have matured in a way that that it has let me be myself 100% on the field, off the field, and, and in whatever I do. I know what can be taken from you and how quickly it can be taken from you, so it's giving 100% of myself to, to everybody in every specific moment. In 2000, the Battle of Big Bear was created by Steve Burns, the Michigan coach, and Joe Baum, the Michigan State coach, making this game perhaps the best rivalry in men's college soccer. Truly, the Big Bear makes this game so special. I mean, how cool is it that each year these players have one chance to get that bear again, and I uh, can't wait for tonight's match. The story of the game, though, is Owen Fitterty, who was the former Michigan goalkeeper. He was 5-0 and against the Spartans. Guess what? He's now the netminder for Michigan State with a chance to take the Big Bear back. You know what the difference is? We're dogs. Let's go. Hey, we're going to go dogging for 90 minutes. I don't want any of you guys to stop running this in 90 minutes. Go. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Just underway from Bryce Blevins. Blevins crosses it. Finnerty punches it out of there. Sent back in by Nick Stone. And a score for Michigan State. What a dream start. Grayson Mercer puts it in the back of the net. And the Spartans lead at 1-0. That doesn't get you fired up. I don't know what will. Kind of comes out of nowhere. It's a brilliant cross. What an awesome start for Michigan State. Finnerty's going to be challenged here by Gaffney. Gaffney squares at Michigan, looking for the equalizer. And there it is to hold Finnerty. The Big Bear always has the intensity from the opening whistle. Yeah. Oh. So it's getting heated up now. I've never seen Buckner getting the crowd into it. Hopefully it'll still be in the match after that. Michigan State is famous. If they get a 1-0 lead, they are really hard to tie, let alone beat. Buka to Blevins. Blevins faked a first time, then with his right foot, and it spins over to Finnerty. Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Callow was top of the six. Oh, I think that was going in. Infinity had nothing to do with it. It was saved by his defender. Great clearance there by Josh Adam off the line. The Spartans on top, 1-0 here in the Battle of the Big Bear. Take that bear today. We take that boy on our toes. Ready? Up. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Come on, get a fire. Get a fire. Get the energy up. Come on. Go white. Go white. Go white. Evans with the left foot. Blevins, is he shooting? He's going to be challenged, and he was ready for it. Still pitching a shutout with a long, long way to go. Go, Green! Turning on at Michigan State. Oh, off the post. The shot coming from Stout. Stout back on it. Stout, yes! Michigan State 2, Michigan 0. Look at the crowd, look at the boys. I mean, this is what you want. This is what you want out of the Battle of the Big Bear. A season high, 3,000 plus, made up of the great students, and the Big Bear 
is staying in East Lansing. It finally returns to Michigan State for the first time since 2017. Michigan State, winners of the Battle of the Big Bear, Michigan State 2, Michigan 0. Turn my arm. It's worth it though.